Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen, and this is Tinker's Combos, a little mini-series that I'm making that's going to help you understand a little bit better of some beginning and end game type tools, weapons, or other creations that uh, I kind of came up with to help people figure out what they may want to go for. So, to start off with, weapons. So you may be looking at this list and thinking, wait a minute, some of these don't exactly look like weapons. Well, there are some benefits to uh, going with something that's not quite so standard. Now, of course, you have your uh, typical entry-level stuff here, and that's what I'm going to be covering first, is kind of going with the Tier 1 stuff, uh, like your beginning game, things that you should try and go for early on so that you can uh, try and be as OP as, pow as uh, quickly as possible. <laughs> uh, that's at least how I tend to play at times, and I'm sure that there are others that do as well. But uh, I'm focusing primarily on the uh, regular sword, not the long sword, because that's just a functionality difference. They have uh, similar tool uh, pieces, so you can therefore modify that if you like. The uh, frying pan and the sign have different uses, uh, but they do tend to shy considerably when it gets to uh, damage. Now, as far as the pick and the axe and the shovel, they're all okay in a pinch if you don't have anything else. But the mattock is really where it's at. Uh, so... Comparing the sword to the mattock, you can actually get some serious stuff going on here. Now, feasibly, you could get into tier 2 items, or at least uh, making them with non-liquid non, uh, materials, you know, like your manilin or your cobalt or ardite. Um, and you could actually make them with uh, the, uh, like your regular stuff like wood and stone and uh, flint and so on. But um, I'm just going to assume that you're not going to be getting into tier 2 until you're able to uh, actually uh, melt metals in a uh, smeltery there. So to start with, we're going to go with the uh, Matic here. Now I have some dummies to demonstrate the different uh, damage values that each one does. So I've got your standard vanilla Minecraft wood sword, iron sword, diamond sword. So wood sword does a standard two and a half uh, damage here and then you've got your uh, iron sword which is going to do three and a half then you've got your diamond sword which does four. So uh, obviously the attack values on here are a little different but you can see the damage that they're actually outputting in this fashion. Now I'm going to keep these on here just for comparison so that you can actually see how this performs. Now, uh, let's start with uh, the broadsword and the flintbone mattock. Now, I ended up taking some items here, and I've spawned them into my inventory for now. But you can see here that if I hold control, it shows all the information about the tool. Now, this is really easy stuff to make. Essentially, you're going to want to try and find yourself some skeletons. Shouldn't be too difficult early on. Just wait for nighttime, and I'm sure something will shoot you in the butt. So, uh, you want to kill them, get some bones, and uh, you're on your way already to uh, getting your next tool. Now, the other item is going to be flint, so uh, if you're trying to build up a smeltery over there, then you're going to be wanting to mine gravel, and side effect of that is going to be some flint. So, once you've made yourself some of these tools, you can see that uh, there are benefits to this. So, if I am to make a mattock for starters, the fractured option is automatically going to, let's just make everything out of bone to start with, um, the fractured is automatically going to increase the attack uh, damage of the tool. So if I end up uh, putting in here the, uh, what is this, the uh, flint tool rods, then you'll see that the attack option of it actually drops considerably. So just having a bone tool rod will increase the damage of the tool itself. So that automatically is pretty good. Not to mention that its modifier and durability bonus are actually pretty darn good, uh, considering it's uh, entry-level stuff. Now, by switching out one of the heads here, you can actually do considerably more damage. Now you can see the attack, 7.3. Attack plus 7 on the diamond sword. Well, that, that's kind of comparable. The vanilla uh, values are a little bit different from what the uh, Tinker's Construct values are, but it's very similar. So if I actually upgrade that to this, my attack goes up a tiny amount. You notice it just goes up a little bit. But the big bonus is here you get crude 2 uh, off of it, and that is bonus damage against unarmored targets. And that actually increases to 10%. Uh, crude 1 is 5%, crude 2 is 10%. Uh, and it actually will increase some damage against uh, armored targets as well. I think it's 5 and 10%. I, I might be off on that one. 
but therefore you can see here we have the increased stuff. Now by having a bone shovel head as well that will give us the splintering effect and that actually uh, will give us the, the up to five hits which I will show you in a moment here. Uh, let me actually demonstrate. So you'll see my first hit is 4.03. Now if I hit again 4.18, 4.33, 4.48, 4.63, 4 4.78 and you can see it just keeps going up to a point that it actually stops. Now that essentially is when you are hitting anything you see it actually ends up switching over. If you start hitting stuff uh, repetitively the more you hit it the more damage it's going to end up doing. So that's what the uh, what is it the splintering ends up adding on there. Now you can actually switch this out with uh, wood or jag, you know, a cactus or something like that and try and get that in there but the bone really is where it's at for uh, trying to get that in there in early game mechanics. Now as far as repair goes uh, if you need to repair this you can actually repair it with bones or flint. So if I put this in here and I drop in a bone it will repair it. As you can see the uh, repair value will switch or flint. So whichever is available to you. So it doesn't really matter. You can use one or the other for that. So that's one of the benefits of having multiple heads on this item. Not to mention the fact that you can actually use it as an axe, as a shovel, and as an offensive weapon. Now if I take a broadsword, and I did some experimentation with this, you can actually see we've got versus unarmored plus 15%. The attack is 7.3. Well even by switching these out which I actually made this, let me show you here, with, um, it was a, a tool rod, the uh, wide guard, and the, uh, the sword blade here. So you can see I will take the uh, wide guard here, and the tool rod, and actually, uh, it wasn't the tool rod, it was a bone tool rod. And you'll see that the uh, damage is 7.3. Well, if I switch it with this bone matic in here, actually, you can see that that one's 7.43. And it actually has a little bit less versus unarmored targets but uh, I think it actually equals out to about the same. So let's test these two together and see how they fare. Alright, Flint Broadsword first. 4.75 and it has the uh, splintering effect on that, or it has the uh, fractured effect on there. It does not have the splintering. If I were to actually end up taking this, let's get this out of here, put that in and add the uh, splintering you'll see that it actually drops further if I end up putting a uh, bone blade in there so that I can get that uh, splintering effect. Now we can actually test this as well, might as well, and I can show you guys the difference between these three. So the bone broadsword, this one here has the bone blade, 4.58 with its maximum splintering and fracturing. Then you go with the broadsword, 4.75, it's not very much different actually, you know, just a little bit more but uh, it's because the flint has a higher attack damage ratio for the blade. Now if I go to the matic, it actually is 4.93. So there you go. Uh, once again, comparing to a regular wooden sword, 2.5. Regular iron sword, 3.5. Diamond sword, 4. So if you just have some pieces of bone and some flint, you can already make yourself a stronger than diamond sword early on. Really, really easy. So that's the uh, first one, and I recommend if you do end up, up deciding to upgrade this early on, uh, you could easily put a diamond on there, and uh, you'll actually see that this, by adding a diamond, let me uh, compare this one, I'll toss it up there, and I can actually click on this, that the attack damage actually increases, the mining speed increases, and the durability increases by 500. So it's a fantastic bonus add-on. One diamond to just totally make this thing a really great early to mid game tool and or weapon. So you'll forever have a shovel, an axe, and a weapon in one inventory slot, which also is a fantastic, fantastic deal. Um, on top of that, if you really want to go further, uh, I found that just having one stack of, um, uh, or one modifier's worth of redstone on there really will help uh, with the speed on there. Let me show you how that works out. So you can see here, with the regular Flint and Bone Matic, digging dirt is okay. Digging it with the redstone, it almost doubles the speed, and that's just with one modifier's worth. And then often early on, you will end up finding yourself fighting the undead. Zombies, uh, you'll have skeletons, uh, all sorts of stuff. 
It won't affect creepers or spiders and the like, but often ending up adding on the smite option will be really, really helpful. By adding consecrated soil, as you see here, which is made with, from graveyard soiled, cooked in a uh, furnace, which graveyard soiled is rotten flesh, dirt, and bone meal, you can add up to 24 of these for one level, and that will increase the damage considerably. Uh, Mm, I'd say, well, here, let's find out here. Uh, I think it actually adds like, um, I don't know, like two or three hearts worth of damage at least. Uh, when I was fighting zombies, I was hitting with the uh, regular Matic. I think it was like three hearts, four hearts, something like that. And then when I uh, hit with this on a zombie, it um, it took about six and a half hearts. So it, uh, it almost doubles the damage versus undead. So that's a worthwhile and really inexpensive uh, opportunity right there. So this one is really good. This one is really good. Uh, and uh, of course the redstone will just help you with uh, mining faster and faster. So those are some really good early game upgrades to get you a really fantastic weapon and or tool. Uh, and if you really insist, you can get yourself a sword, but I uh, recommend that you just skip that because it's not worth it early game. So moving on towards end game. Now, typically in the past, people have been, okay, well, I will just go for the big giant sword. Well, here's where you're going to be a little bit unhappy. The big giant sword does just as much damage as the little sword when you uh, first make it. Uh, to compare, if you make them both out of completely manilin parts, then you'll end up with the same uh, damage. And uh, it it's funny how it actually functions. Let me show you. So you can see here, I have a regular cleaver. And with this, if I actually hold control, you can see that the uh, middle two, the sword blade and the large plate, essentially donate half of what the uh, damage output is, plus some durability and uh, mining speed. Now, of course, the tool rods both end up just adding in some a little durability and a handle modifier, depending upon how you end up placing those in there. So that ends up being... 50% of it is the blade and that plate. This is where it's kind of weird. So if you replace either one of those with something that is not a high damage, you will lose considerable amounts of damage on your weapon. So therefore, by just crafting one of those, it's not really that helpful. So what good is a cleaver? It can help you considerably if you are out there trying to find yourself some heads. And I will explain. Allow me to grab all these. And we'll go into here. So, a Manilin Broadsword, which has Insatiable and Cold-Blooded. Cold-Blooded will just add a bonus damage to it. Insatiable, as you attack, it's similar to the bone uh, fracture, or not the fractured, the um, splintering effect, where it will actually uh, just end up increasing damage over time to a certain point. Uh, but it's actually much better attack damage than regular bone is. So therefore, it's very useful to get that uh damage ratio up. So let me use this sword here. And this is a, a maxed out sword I have. Uh, actually, before, let me let me uh, show you here. I have on here uh, a whole bunch of... Clear that out and put a new one in. All right, I have on here it maxed out on just putting in blocks of quartz. Nothing else on there. Just showing you damage. And you can see here that the attack is 17.69. Really, really high. Now, if I do the same thing with a manila and cleaver, which has one of its handles removed and replaced with a paper handle to give it an extra modifier, you can see it's actually slightly less. Rather disappointing. Now, the thing is, cleavers only come with two upgrade slots. The creators of this realized that by having more parts to create it, you would have that option. So they ended up forcing that out. And actually by switching out uh, a paper piece for one, either the, um, one of the two tool rods, you very, lose very, very little durability. So uh, it actually takes the highest of the two as far as the handle modifier goes. Um, but what it is really, really good for is just at having that 10% uh, beheading built into it. So if you take something like this, where I have beheading 3, and if you're not familiar with beheading, by having a tool in here that has modifiers remaining, you can actually add obsidian and an enderpearl, and it will add a beheading option, which gives you a 10% option 
or a chance to uh, behead and keep the enemy's head on killing it. So with the uh, cleaver, it has a built-in 10% on there. So you can actually end up stacking that by putting on uh, that paper tool rod and the other three uh, being manilin, you'll be able to actually benefit a bit more from it. Now, it being a cleaver, it already has built in huge durability because you've got four pieces once again. So with this, you'll basically get beheading three, plus it's got the built in 10% chance. So you've got essentially about 40% chance on kill of getting uh, the creature's head. So that is where the investment is with this. Now, if you really want to go for damage on here, uh, I did uh, try replacing um, one of the uh, items or one of the uh, tool rods with papers and uh, just totally maxing it out with uh, quartz to give it sharpness. This one I ended up adding in uh, bone for one of the tool rods. And then you've got your traditional one that just has the beheading. So this is your standard damage. Actually, let me uh, hit these guys a few times to get the damage rate up. All right, so 1149 is the, the max for your standard manilin cleaver. Then you've got your... Uh, what is it? The uh, f the one with the bone handle on it. And then you've got your uh, one here with the uh, paper and an extra level of sharpness. So it actually ends up being that the um, the one with the bone handle ends up being better and actually easier to get because just getting some bone is much easier and quicker to get than it is to get a whole lot of blocks of quartz. But um, moving on, uh, going for weapons, you would think that, well, a matic on lower levels with similar materials is uh, actually better than a sword. Well, in this case, it isn't. It actually has diminishing returns as it uh, progresses through the different materials. So the, your best bet in this case is going to be probably uh, a, um, let's see here, I've got a fractured, insatiable, cold-blooded, sharpest manilin broadsword. And the fractured, of course, is the uh, bone handle. It has the, um, the uh, pommel, or not the pommel, the, the uh, hilt or um, the wide guard is actually manilin, and then the blade is manilin as well. So those are your three parts. And then I just stacked a whole bunch of um, uh, quartz on there for damage ratio bonus. So there you go. You've got your, once I hit a whole bunch of times, got 14.38, and that's really, really good damage considering that a diamond sword does four. <laughs> <laughs> that's not enchanted, I will give it that, but I mean, that that's really, really impressive. And of course, this is max amount of modifiers used is uh, all just in quartz. Obviously, uh, I personally prefer to put on some other modifiers. I would probably put on like a stack of uh, quartz and then I would end up adding in. I always end up have, making sure that I have myself uh, some uh, necrotic bones or a necrotic bone on there just because that is going to uh, allow it to um, steal some health with every hit, a uh, 10% health. So I find that my survivability factor goes up a lot. Uh, I then often end up using some lapis so that I can get uh, looting on there. And then, of course, I've used up all my modifiers with, like, quartz, lapis, and uh, lifesteal, and I end up running out. But, I mean, hey, it's up to you. If you want to soulbind it, you can add another star. If you want to just have an undead fighting sword, you can do that. You can even increase this one's beheading value and uh, just have a faster swing rate with it and uh, go for a maximum of three beheading instead of uh, that uh, built-in four. You can add in knockback and so on. But there you go. Those are my uh, suggestions for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I know that I did because uh, I am currently playing in a 1.8.9 world, and this was uh, a very good learning experience for myself. Now, I will look into uh, trying to do a little bit more with the Tinker's Construct tools and get you guys another Tinker's Combos episode out soon. So until then, hope you guys have a good day, and take it easy. <laughs>